Good evening, everybody. Good evening. That's great. Okay, so uh, the question is, is artificial intelligence the future? A quick show of hands in the room. Who, who uses artificial intelligence now? Well, oh, that's about half the people. I'm going to ask that question again at the end, and pretty much all of your hands are going to go up. Because as uh, uh, Arifa was talking about earlier, um, artificial intelligence is actually used in a lot of the things that we do today. Um, so, for example, anybody in the room use Google Translate? There you go. Okay, so for example, Google Translate processes 140 billion uh, words a day. Um, and back in 2016, it launched its neural machine translation system, which enables it to process a huge volume of translation. So AI is used in Google Translate. Um, but what's interesting is that the world of fintech and the world of AI are starting to come together. So it's a wonderful time to be in, in fintech. Um, the investment in fintech uh, reached a staggering $23.2 billion uh, last year, according to Accenture. Um, and AI is one of the hottest subjects within fintech itself, so financial technology. Uh, so a quote here from Paul Doherty, the um, CTO at Accenture, AI is poised to transform business in ways we have not seen since the impact of computer technology. So AI will really, really transform a lot of what's going on. And I was really interested to find this stat, which is that, um, so there's an interesting report from Narrative Science that already 32% of financial services uh, executives are already using AI. So a lot of the banks, a lot of the technology companies out there, financial services companies, are already using AI for things like predictive analysis, recommendations, voice recognition, and response. Um, my bank, First Direct, when I ring them up now, they use voice recognition, so I don't have to remember those uh, annoying uh, special things that I've got to remember uh, when I ring up my bank. So uh, this, is a, this is a good chart. The primary reasons for financial services organizations using AI-powered services. Um, anybody that wants a copy of the slides, by the way, very happy to share them um, at the end. Um, so one of the things that we, we're looking at is that um, you can increase work pro workforce productivity significantly using AI. And Arifa talked about that. There's going to be a lot of um, jobs displaced with AI. I think from Arifa's slides, uh, the estimates are about 7 million jobs will get displaced and another 2 million jobs will actually get created. So the net, net cut will be about 5 million. Um, but um, all organizations will start to, to look at um, AI as a way to uh, improve uh, their productivity. But it's not easy. There's a lot of hurdles around this, um, and it's a big buzzword at the moment. And as um, Arifa showed on that Gartner curve, you go into that dip of despair. Yes, yeah? so you go through the hype, and then you go through the dip of despair as people get frustrated with not being able to implement fast enough, and then you go onto the uh, curve of implementation. So I'm going to take you through a case study now of an organization that has actually implemented uh, artificial intelligence um, in a, a, a very interesting area called receivables. Okay? So I look at your faces. Invoices, they're not very sexy, are they? Yeah? But the volume of overdue invoices in Europe is quite staggering. About 40% of the invoices that you issue as a business go past their due date. Okay? So four out of 10 invoices. Um, so, when um, Otto Group, which is uh, one of the biggest uh, retail groups in Europe, they're about a 12.5 billion euro turnover group, they identified the need to collect those overdue invoices a lot faster and a lot better and a lot more efficiently. Um, so, they looked at the process, which is quite outdated, heavily manual process. So, when you go overdue with your invoice, you might get a letter in the post asking you to pay that invoice, and then a couple of weeks later, when you a couple of weeks later, when you don't respond to it, you get another letter in the post, and then you get another letter in the post. So these processes are very um, uh, outdated and old-fashioned. So what they did was uh, they partnered with a fintech builder who built them an AI platform, and that fintech builder is called Liquid Labs. 
So, the concept behind the AI platform is quite simple. If you're the person who's uh, received the invoice, it learns your behavior when you go and chase that invoice. So when we go and ask you to pay that invoice, the AI learns your behavior so that it can modify its behavior to get you to pay quicker. So AG, uh, AI can sometimes be described in uh, using agents. So these are variables that the AI can use and uh, modify uh, to uh, change its behavior towards yourself. So with the invoices, for example, um, time is an agent. So if the invoice is sent out to you on a Monday morning and you delete that email, then the AI would learn that. You've deleted that email, you didn't respond, so it might change the time. So it might change it to the afternoon or it might change it to a different day. This one I find quite fascinating, which is the channel agent. So the channel agent will decide which channel or which method of communication is the best way to communicate with you. So we're noticing a very big difference with the millennials. I don't know if you noticed, trying to walk along the streets of London today, it's almost impossible because people are messing about with their smartphones. Yeah? On average, we touch our smartphones over 300 times a day. And we look at them for more than three hours a day. Yeah? I'm looking around the room and there are about 10 people looking at their smartphones right now. Hopefully you're tweeting uh, uh, my slides. But what the AI will do is it will learn from your behavior. So we've noticed that, for example, if we send a, uh, an email to a millennial, and uh, somebody who aged sort of 20 to, uh, 20 to 30, Quite often they won't respond to the, to the email, but they will respond to um, an SMS, for example. One of the other um, agents that um, you can use uh, with communication is called the tonality agent. So this is where you vary the tone of voice from being friendly through to being quite severe. So, how does it practically work? Well, imagine a new invoice goes into the system, it gets categorized, and it goes into a workflow to send that out to uh, the customer. So for example, it might send an SMS with a positive message at eight o'clock in the morning. I presented this to an Italian bank and they said, Steve, doesn't matter how positive it is, if it's eight o'clock in the morning in Italy, you ain't gonna get a good response to it. So the AI should learn that pretty fast. Once that's delivered out, then the AI will look at the response, whether that SMS was clicked on, whether the link was clicked on, did they go forward to make a payment, and it will learn from that behavior. So if there's a reaction and it's paid, great, it'll feed that back into the system. And one of the exciting things that's coming a bit later in the year from this particular AI platform is the ability to cluster, to get, get a group of people's responses and put them together. So for example, it might say that people in Munich respond better to emails on a Tuesday, than people in, in Hamburg who respond better to emails on a Thursday. So it can vary those things. This cross-media approach is, is going to be quite exciting, I think, for a lot of AI platforms as we move forward. So although we're talking about invoices here, this could be uh, applied in, in a whole range of uh, areas here in terms of sales, in terms of customer interaction for businesses. So for example, most invoices went out in the post. Um, and we've started to implement email and SMS, um, but the one really exciting one that I'm waiting for is messengers. So we'll be able to communicate with the person who owes the money via um, WhatsApp and, and Facebook Messenger, etc. So this is an example of the tonality. So this is four different versions of the same SMS that goes out to the customer based on uh, uh, different uh, uh, neutral Neutral warning here through to a last warning and a friendly reminder. One of the areas that's quite interesting for me as well is around dispute handling. So imagine if an invoice has gone out to somebody and they don't want to pay the invoice for whatever reason. Often their response is nothing, so that they just don't pay it. Or if they're going to dispute it because they've already returned the goods or for any other reason, then quite often that will come back to the business in a very unstructured format. So they'll ring the call center or they'll send an email or in certain circumstances they'll go on social media and start complaining. So what we do uh, in this process here is we provide a structured format 
for that response to come back. And again, the AI can learn from that. And you can, you can deploy the AI to automatically make a response. So for example, one of our uh, customers had a repeated response of, I can't afford to pay because I've lost my job. So now the AI knows that if somebody says, I've lost my job, can't afford to pay, to automatically offer that person um, uh, staged instalments uh, as a way of paying that bill. So many people that look at AI assume the future utopia of the machine doing everything from day one. But it doesn't really work like that in the real world. So we talk about these amazing technologies and, and the machine doing absolutely everything. What we're finding really is that most businesses, they need to go through a number of stages before they get to AI. So if you look at the invoices world, we go through four different stages. The first stage is literally just knowing what's happening with your invoices, where they are and what's happening to them, just getting them into the system. The second area is around digitization. So this is enabling uh, the digital communication by SMS, email, that kind of thing to the customer, but also giving them the opportunity to pay quite quickly. So this is where my, as Rifa was mentioning, I used to work a lot in payments and there are new, very fast ways of paying a bill uh, that don't involve a long process like a credit transfer. So there's uh, technologies like PayPal that you're very familiar with, but there's a lot of new technologies coming uh, down the line because of a, a financial regulation called PSD2, which will enable the banks uh, uh, to release uh, uh, their communication methods between each other. Stage three then goes into optimization, so you can do quite a lot of optimization of the process, and then finally, you get down to stage four, which is AI. So you let the AI loose on the process and it does its automatic thinking and automatic response. So a very quick summary. Artificial intelligence presents a significant opportunity for financial services. All the major banks, all the major financial services organizations are looking at AI as a way of automating processes. Most of them are at least looking at it in 2017 but pretty much everybody that I've spoken to from, from all the banks, they already have projects up and running and in AI. But it is a journey. Um, there's productivity benefits and gains to be had on those steps as you go through visualization and optimization through to AI, but you don't get the AI benefits day one. You have to work at it to get through there. Thank you very much. Thank you.